Should speed be a goal on the drums? Should we be prioritizing chops and technique or should groove and feel really be our goal? We're gonna go down a list of some of the best drummers in the world and we're gonna see if they possess more groove and feel or chops. Why is the camera out of focus? That's weird. Hey everybody, welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer. This is a channel that's all about teaching you the most important non-glamorous tips and topics of the trade to help you really become a better drummer. If you're new to the channel, click that subscribe button. Okay, so I actually wanna start here by really answering our question and sort of giving you a core statement that we can then unpack to then go further and deeper into this. And we're gonna finish the video by going down a list of five really great drummers who I think are phenomenal groove drummers, but we're gonna examine their playing and ask, okay, do they have good chops also? So in other words, are the drummers who have the best groove also good chop players? I think that's an interesting discussion. So those of you who are on my email list received an email recently. The topic of the, or the title of the email, I think was, should speed be a goal on the drums? And so we kind of dove briefly into this topic and we zeroed this down to the statement of, if you're diligently working on your technique as a drummer, then smooth playing that feels good will naturally develop and so will chops. So basically what I'm saying in that is if you're working on your technique and you're making sure that you're holding the sticks right and you're letting the laws of physics play out and you're letting the sticks do what they want to do and you're just kind of there to sort of manipulate them but let them move naturally, well that's going to naturally translate to smooth playing, fluid motion around the kit, solid time, all of which contribute to great groove. Now we all know that in order to have good chops, we've got to have great technique. And we're talking about great technique here. So if you have that technique developed that's going to allow you to play smoothly and fluidly, well, that's directly going to translate to chops most likely. So having said that, let's unpack this a little further and think through, okay, what are those specific things that we actually need to practice to work on bettering our groove and our feel? What are those things that are also going to flow over into the chops world? So these basic technique things that we need to know in order to achieve smooth playing and good groove and good feel and eventually good chops are just those absolute basics that you guys hear me talk about all the time on this channel. The first thing is just good hand technique, staying loose. That's really a not rocket science, it's not complicated. And you guys have seen in previous videos, which I will link at the end of this one and throw in the description below, the way you hold your sticks doesn't have to be extremely complicated. And making sure that you're just holding them loosely and letting the sticks bounce smoothly, you're letting them move within your hands, you're not squeezing too tight, and you're playing from your wrists. If you're doing that, that means that you're able to smoothly go from one drum to the other and you can use your wrist to navigate the stick from one drum to another. And so you're not having to put forth a lot of effort to play loudly, softly, or even quickly. And so that's where immediately we've got that smooth technique, which leads to smooth time, smooth playing, a good feeling groove that immediately flows over into chops. Because if you're working on, say, your singles, you're working on your doubles, then you've got the fingers going, you've got the wrist working, that's gonna translate really well to playing chops well also, however fast. It's also important that we're working on our posture and staying relaxed. This is a big one, and of course, just this topic, um, we could branch into dozens of subtopics, and so I've talked about this in other videos, and we'll talk about it more in upcoming videos, but make sure you're staying relaxed with the kit, and make sure you have your kit set up where you're not having to reach too far for things, or you're not cramped up. Make sure that it makes sense. Take the time to think about that and make sure your shoulders are staying relaxed. I know for me, it's always been a learning process to make sure that I'm thinking about these things as I'm playing. And so a big thing is just sitting there playing on my pad, whether I'm playing loud and slow or loud and fast or uh, slow and quiet, slow and loud. Always making sure that no matter what dynamic or tempo I'm playing, I'm thinking, okay, are my shoulders relaxed? Um, are my arms tensing up? Am I sitting up straight? And so if you can do those things in pad practice, playing the very basics, then it can translate into your overall kit playing. Because when you're in the heat of a moment playing a gig, you want to already have the habit of thinking about those things so that you can make sure you stay relaxed for an entire night. Being relaxed up here plays a huge part in being relaxed down here, which translates to what your groove sounds like and translates to your chops. It's a big deal. So if you're working on those things, whether or not speed is actually your goal, you're going to be accomplishing speed eventually. So. Just to kind of state my opinion there before we jump into this list of drummers, I think that playing relaxed and playing with good technique, that should be your number one goal. And if that's your number one goal, then overall playing a groove smoothly and playing fills well, that's gonna naturally happen. And so chops are gonna happen too. If you're working on playing doubles and playing fast singles, you're working on activating those fingers, chops are gonna happen. So I don't think speed directly needs to be a goal. But you can have a goal of good technique with speed in mind, knowing that it's going to happen. 
So again, this is really a, a big complex topic overall and I'm way simplifying it here, but I have made some other videos in the past that go more in depth with these kinds of things where we're physically examining the mechanics of techniques, so be sure to check those out. Now let's dive into the list of drummers. I think this is where things get most interesting because we're looking at real world examples. All right, I'm gonna try to move down this list pretty quick. There are five drummers and the last one is the one that I wanna hear your opinion on because I think it's very debatable whether or not he has chops. So we're gonna get there. First off though, Aaron Sterling. I love this drummer. He's an amazing player and he's really fun to watch. And I've become really familiar with his work listening to records he's played on. He's primarily a studio drummer and so it's hard to find good video of him on YouTube. But you'll find that he's a really great groove drummer and that's why he plays on so many records. But he has incredible facility around the kit and incredible chops as well. Number two, Steve Jordan. I mean, if we're talking about groove drummers, he is a phenomenal groove drummer and he's known for being able to play basic grooves extremely well. And so he might get hired to literally play don't, can't, don't, can't because he does it better than the rest of us and he does it so well and it feels so good. He's played that exact groove on dozens of, say dozens, definitely a lot of John Mayer songs. He's played on a lot of the John Mayer records. So is Aaron Sterling, by the way. In the video that I've linked in the description, you'll find Steve Jordan playing a solo, but it's a groove based solo. And so it's extremely musical and it just has you like grooving along as you're listening and going, yeah, I love what he's playing. It's one of the best solos I've heard because I can really get into that kind of thing. I think you guys will like it too. Number three, Abel Boreal Jr. This guy is definitely like a big rock and roll, meat and potatoes kind of drummer. But I say meat and potatoes, like caveman drummer, meaning he plays the big drums and he plays just heavy hitting rock and roll stuff really well but he also has really good chops and facility around the kit. He's definitely not a one-trick pony in that way. He has incredible technique. Number four, this list would not be complete without talking a little about John Bonham because he had an undeniable groove, a very unique feeling groove, the way he might push or pull the tempo and really drive the feel of Led Zeppelin as a band. But he also had really great chops on top of that. There's all the Bonham-isms that are famous, the quick fills around the toms that he would play, uh, the kick drum triplets, the tom triplets, and so we had really great facility around the kit. Just watch the Moby Dick solo and you can definitely uh, see that that's true. Check that out in the description below. So number five, the last drummer that I told you, okay, I want your opinion on. Ringo Starr is a really great groove drummer and I think the brilliance behind all of his drumming was the parts that he would create. He had a way of always creating the perfect groove, the perfect fills to really put a song together. Now having said that, there's a lot of debate out there that uh, Ringo is not a good drummer, he didn't have good facility, his technique was bad, he wasn't really a drummer's drummer, you know, he just heard the parts and played them. Yeah, maybe he's not the flashiest drummer and he's not, he doesn't have the technique level of say Jojo Mayer or somebody like that, but it's safe to say that he had to have had enough chops to really play smoothly around the kit, which he did in a lot of the grooves. If you just listen to the Come Together groove, that's one of the most iconic drum grooves of all time. In order to play that smoothly, there has to be some facility involved and some moving around the kit. So, I want to hear from you guys in the comments. What do you think about Ringo's chops? Do you think that what he had we can call chops? Or should we say that he's just a groove drummer? I think this is kind of an interesting example. So let me know what you think. So go check out all these guys in the description. I also threw links to some previous videos about technique because today's such an overview. There's a lot of directions you can go from this discussion. So be sure to check those out. And if this was your first time here checking out the non-glamorous drummer, all these non-glamorous topics that I try to cover, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Come back, watch some more videos. There's a new one up every Friday. Thanks guys, I will see you next time.